Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part three of my recycle bin series where we're making a recycle bin that you can dump deleted records into. If you haven't watched parts one and two yet, go watch those first, then come on back. All right, so our recycle bin is working, but just for the customer form. What I want to do next is make a generic function that we can use that we don't have to customize it every time we want to drop this into a new form. So let's take this code, everything inside the recycle bin click, because we're going to leave that. We'll, we still need the button. Actually, no, we don't need that because we're going to make it an event handler. So take all of this stuff, cut it out, snip, go back over here and go to your global module. If you don't have one, create one. All right, open it up. And in here, I'm going to paste it down the bottom, boom, right there. All right, so the first thing we got to do is make it public so everybody can call it. And we need to make it a function. You can't have it as an event handler unless it's a function. Even though it's not returning a value, that's just the way they did it, okay? And let's make this uh, send to recycle bin. Now there's some information we have to send to it, all the stuff in here. So we need to send to it the table name, the primary key field name, and the value of the field that we are recycling, okay? So up here, we're gonna say table name as string, field name, or P, let's call it PK field name as a string, and then the ID as a long, okay? I like to make these so that the user who's using it, who's writing the code, you know, who's writing the function out knows what exactly this is. That's the table, that's the primary key field name, and that's the ID. Now we just gotta make some substitutions. All right, everywhere you see customer T, we gotta replace it with table name. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit find, control F. All right, I'm gonna put in here customer T, and we're gonna replace this. Whoop. I hate how this thing moves around. Access team, fix that. This box should not move. And it always moves into the upper left corner of my very, very wide monitor. All right. Um, we're going to replace that. Well, actually, you know what? We're not going to use this. We're just going to use it for finding. We're not going to use it for replacing because we got to do some gymnastics with this because this is a variable and this is actually inside the string here. All right. So let's sit. I'm going to stick to the current procedure. I don't want to leave this procedure. A procedure is either a sub or a function. All right. So hit find next. All right. Here's the first one. See how it moved? Oh, I hate that. All right. So this is inside the string, so we gotta go like this. We gotta go eh, and table name, and uh. See that? That's gonna put customer T in there because it's coming in as a variable inside that string. Okay, let's find the next one. All right, here it is right here. So again, replace this. I'm just gonna copy this. Replace that customer T with that. Okay, find the next one. All right, down here, same thing. And we can just do this, watch, copy that and stick it right there. Get rid of those extra spaces. And that's probably the last one, right? Okay, no more. All right, that's why we stick to the current procedure. I won't leave this function. Okay, PK field name is what's gonna go in where customer ID is. So I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard. I'm gonna now search for customer ID. All right, find, all right, there's the first one. Same thing we gotta go. We gotta go eh, 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 like that, All right? Close the string, ampersand the field name, ampersand, open the string back up again. And this guy's getting too long. So we're gonna move the where condition down to the next line like that. Okay, let's find the next one. Now this is the value. So that's why you gotta be careful with this stuff. That's the value. Might as well do it while we're here. Let's put the ID there. Okay, find next. All right, that is the value. So that'll just be ID. Find next. Okay, this is inside the string. So it's going to be PK field name equals the ID. And I think that's it. Find next. Okay, so that's all of them. Okay, so now our function should work by sending it the table name the primary key field name, and the ID value of the record we want to recycle. 
So it'll still ask us if we're sure. It'll loop through all the fields in this table, right? It'll create that thing. It'll add this stuff. It'll delete the right record. The only problem we're going to have is this. The me. If I debug compile, it'll probably yell at me. Yep, see? You can't use me in a global module because me only works in forms and reports. So that's a big problem. How do we get what form we're on? Well, we can assume that we're on whatever we're recycling is the current form that's active. And we can get that with screen dot active form dot requery. Whatever form we're on, requery it. Okay. All right. Now we can use send to recycle bin as a function in an event. I call it an event handler. Save it. Debug compile once in a while. Okay, we did that. Close it. Close it. Let's first test it and make sure it works with the customer. So design view. Open this guy up. Now we removed its event. That's okay. In the on click box right here, we're going to say equals send to recycle bin. There it is. All right. First thing is table name. Customer T. Next, primary key field name. Customer ID. And what's the ID value? That's going to be the actual customer ID on the form. So that's going to be customer ID just like that. Now be very careful because sometimes, okay, good. Sometimes it'll try to treat that as a string. Make sure it doesn't. Make sure, if anything, it puts brackets around it for you. Okay. Now, save it. Close it. Let's test it. Let's recycle Jean-Luc. Ready? Click. Are you sure? Yes. All right. Let's go see if he's in the recycle bin. Where is it? Up here. There's Jean-Luc. All right, it's working. Now, let's test it with a contact. And I got rid of the form, didn't I? <laughs> we'll just open up the contacts form here. Let's see. Contacts. All right, so these are all contacts, right? And I used to have a button on the customer form to open contacts, but we deleted it in the first lesson. That's okay. But let's just drop our button down here. So let's go to the customer form. I'm going to copy this guy. Just copy the whole button. Design view. And let's just drop it down here on the bottom. I'll just make this smaller. Okay, there's my recycle bin button. Make it look pretty, whatever you want to do. All right, open it up. And now we just modify its properties. All right, the table here is contact T, contact ID, and again, contact ID. Hit OK. Save it, close it, save it, close it. Open it back up. There's contacts. All right, let's get rid of first MVP award. Ready? Click. Are you sure? Yep. All right, it disappeared. And there it is. Contact ID record 24, now in here. Okay, there's all the data that was in there. It's working. It's working. Now, a couple things. First of all, if you're dealing with something like orders, if you recycle the parent record, well, first of all, you won't be able to delete the line item or the, 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 the order if it's got line items, if you have referential integrity set up in your relationships. But if you do delete this guy or recycle it, you're going to also want to recycle all of these child records too. That's not something we're going to cover today. If you guys want to see me do that, let me know. And if enough people post a comment down below, I will make a follow-up video showing you how to also do all the child records. You can store them all in the same recycle uh, uh, entry, right? Right in the recycle bin T. You can have an order in here and have all of its child information right in there. It's definitely possible. It just adds another record set loop in the, in the string creator. Okay. Another thing is right now, if you decide, oh crap, I deleted somebody that I need, you'd have to go in here, get the information. At least you got it right. And you'd have to just copy and paste everything else and put it back in the table. It would be nice like windows, how windows has the recycle bin tool. You can go in here and just click a button and say, restore that for me. Right? Like here, for example, here's my recycle bin form, right? And I got Jean-Luc Picard, I've got me, right? Because I've previously recycled those records and they're not in here anymore. 
Well, it'd be nice if I could just click on restore record. Are you sure? Yes. And it puts me back. Isn't that pretty cool? Well, that we're going to show how I did that in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos, not just this one, all of them. There's hundreds of them by now. And gold members can download these databases and you get access to my code vault and everybody gets some free training every month and it's really cool. So join today, check it out. You'll find more information down below. But there you go, folks. Now you have a fully functioning recycle bin for your access database. It's you know, one record at a time, but still, you know, it'll, it'll save you in a pinch if you realize, oh, crap, I deleted that customer last month. Right. And this will save you some time rather than having to implement a new field into all of your tables and all your forms and your queries and all that stuff. So I use this myself personally. I don't delete much, but some of the things I do delete, I want to make sure I can get them back if I need to. But there you go. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. And members, I'll see you in the extended cut. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.